This is going to be just a brief little video. I just wanted to spend a bit of time about why I think we uh, use comparative research me methods and uh, why we should think about the choices that we make when we're trying to use them. Often people use them without thinking about the costs and benefits of doing so. I just wanted to highlight several reasons that I think that comparative method has been at the um, the center of the vast majority of research that I've seen in political science. And it is because you can ask questions that travel. You have generalizable arguments about human behavior or about political institutions. And there is uh, a lot of important um, political theory debates to be had about whether uh, you can compare people across uh, cultures, across countries, across institutions, across time periods. Um, my experience in, in the time frame that I've lived is that there are important differences between institutions and uh, cultures and incentives in the institutions uh, that people create and uh, live with. However, often a lot of what we care about, uh, the questions that we, we have, do travel. Because in international relations or in comparative politics or in Australian politics, um, states have to face similar challenges. They have to provide security for their citizens. They have to provide um, social services. Governments have to maintain law and order without undue repression. Uh, these incentives and constraints uh, that states have to face are of a uh, comparable uh, nature. They might have different tools to be able to do so or capacity to be able to do so. But because the international state system has provided incentives to be as homogenous as possible and being nation states with a geogra um, defined geographical area, people uh, in which the uh, in that geographic area that are beholden to the laws within that area, that there's a lot of similar challenges for governments as well as citizens that uh, are in the areas governed by those governments, that those questions can travel in useful and interesting ways. And a lot of the measures that we have can conceive of for um, often these latent characteristics of the world that we care about can potentially also travel. And so by asking comparative generalizable questions, we can make comparative generalizable theories using comparable uh, evidence that can really have a larger effect on people or literatures outside our, our scope. And so I think for me, relating to uh, election violence, a couple of examples that I could think about is Almost every country holds uh, elections. Uh, they've become, since the end of the Cold War, uh, an, an assumed method by which countries have to at least pretend that they're listening to the people who live within their country. They hold elections. Um, and with the Russian-Ukrainian conflict now, the Russia is, is uh, supporting two of the breakaway promises to hold elections as a way to try to provide legitimacy to try to help them um, uh, get independence from Ukraine. And when holding elections, almost all election has to have someone managing the process. I guess they all have to have some group managing the process, either an election management body or a part of the government that's, that's responsible for holding the elections. As well as in um, the last 30 years, there's been an assumption that election monitors from within the country as well as from international bodies should be able to view the process in order to provide some neutral um, perspective on how well that that uh, process has been carried out. I've seen elections in a whole bunch of different con uh, contests. I was actually an election monitor for a couple of elections in uh, Myanmar in 2015 in, in South Korea, and you really do get a perspective and the words that you do um, uh, conclude with after viewing the election does have some weight. And so these incentives for different actors and their effects could be comparable across different, uh, different frameworks. 
with some adjustments, of course, but election monitors monitor uh, Australian elections, U.S. elections, British elections, um, uh, Myanmar elections, if they do have them again. And so I think the comparative research says there are common challenges in, in different countries, in different cases, by comparing them, by gathering as broad and potentially more general uh, theoretical uh, arguments about these different processes, you can make conclusions about what policies have what effect and potentially uh, find ways of trying to improve policies in a whole bunch of different areas outside your original study. So that's one of the benefits that I think of comparative research. I definitely think that there's arguments to be made for individual case studies, but this is why we're focusing on groups uh, for this week. So let's move on to the next section.